hello, I'm back, Rod from Fleet News Group. Today I have here with me the Mazda CX-60. Today's video is going to tell you all about this car, what it's like to drive, can you tow with it, is it a good car for fleet, and how comfortable is it to live with every day. All that and more in today's video, so keep watching and we'll tell you all about it. And remember, if you like these videos, don't forget to hit that like button down there, as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you can be kept up to date with everything we're doing here at the Fleet News Group. Go on, give that like button that little bit of a tickle. You know you want to. Well first up in today's video, let's take a look at the styling of the CX-60. Well looking at the styling of the CX-60, it has a bit of a flatter nose on it compared to the CX-5, but it's all the new design theme that Mazda has throughout its entire range of the CX models, 30, 60, 70, 80 and 90, got a few of them there to choose from. But I think it's very attractive. This is the, the GT variant, the middle of the range. Very nice with the 20 inch black wheels there. It's a nice colour too, the dark blue, quite like it. And looking at it here as we walk along, it's quite an attractive shape. Looks very stylish, it's got the nice quad exhaust treatment at the back as well. And it is quite an attractive, stylish SUV. It gives very good, strong road presence. Very distinctive. You know it's a Mazda just by looking at it. Not just for the badges, but they stand out in the road. And I think it's quite an attractive car. I like it. Well, what's under the bonnet? Let's take a look, see. Gas struts. Yes. Just saying. How good are they? In the CX-60, there's actually a choice of three motors. Petrol, diesel, and a plug-in hybrid. The CX-60 GT here, as you see it right now, has the 3.3 litre, 24 valve, inline six cylinder turbo motor with a 48 volt mild hybrid boost and an eight speed automatic transmission. The motor is good for 209 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque. On the combined cycle, Mazda lists the fuel economy on this vehicle at 7.4 litres per 100 k's. Later in the video I'll tell you exactly what I have seen regularly driving this vehicle as to what you can expect as everyday fuel economy. CO2 emissions. Mazda lists the CO2 emissions in this car at 171 grams per kilometre. And for something that weighs curb weight of nearly two tonne, medium sized SUV, luxury vehicle, that's not doing too bad. But over a year, say 20,000 k's, how much CO2 is that going to put into the atmosphere? Well, over about 20,000 kilometres, 12 month period, say, based on Mazda's figures, you expect this vehicle to put out 3.42 tonnes of CO2 per annum, or 20,000 k's. Not too bad, remembering it is nearly a two tonne SUV comfortable car to drive. It does have the mild hybrid boost going for it, but it is ostensibly an ice motor vehicle, and that's what it is. Well, sitting in the driver's seat now, of the CX-60 GT. Looks very nice in here. Look at the lovely, huge, now touchscreen. 
display. Very nice. It's got that going there. You can still use it and control it through the Mazda system here with the little knob and push button and all the buttons to do it. It gets quite intuitive once you get used to it, but as a fallback, because I think some people didn't like the fact that it um, wasn't a touch screen before, it now is. So you have the choice of what you want to do. The dashboard's nice, soft leather type surfaces there. It's very good. We've got a full leather steering wheel here. Of course, the leather seats as part of the uh, package they have for the CX60 GT now. The heated in the front and the outboard rears as well. Nice soft split panel console here. Put a junk in there. Lots of room for stuff in there. Very good. Coming back here, the instrument panel is fully digital. Very nice. Easy to read. Multifunction displays there. It really is a nice bit of instruments to be looking at. Plus, we have up here, not that you may be able to see it, the camera's a bit difficult. There's a full heads-up display system as well, which means you can keep your eyes on the road safely all the time. Other things down here, we've got the transmission, the MI drive selector there, auto hold on the uh, car so you don't have to keep your foot on the brake when you stopped at the lights, plus the, all the Mazda control systems for the infotainment system as well. The coffee cup test, here it is ready and waiting, full of a hot coffee for me. Nice and easy, pick it up, have your sip, put it back down, and when you don't need it, you can just fold, move anything here, fold that away. It has the nice wood veneer finish on there. And you need your cup in there, whack it back in as well. Very easy. Over on this side, we've got the big door bins. Got my water flask down there, very handy. It's got a nice soft touch on the, um, a bit hard up on that one, up here, but uh, nice and soft on the armrest. All the window switches, mirror operation switches and a multitude of switches for the cruise and speed limiter on this side and the audio functions and phone controls over on the other side. It is a quite a pleasant environment in here. Again we've got that huge panoramic sunroof up there that's very nice and even with a sunroof you've still got somewhere to put your sunnies. That's very good. It's a very nice, comfortable place here in the CX-60. The driver's seat's fully powered as well, as is the passengers. And even the steering wheel is heated. And we've got those controls down here. Steering heating, driver's seat heating, passenger seat heating. And of course the dual zone climate control and some nice buttons to make it easy to operate as well. Very, very nice in here. The CX-60 also has the MI drive system to help control transmission settings for different modes that it can drive in for you. I'll just change it over and show you what it looks like in the instruments here. So looking there, we're currently in normal mode, so I'll change it into sport mode. And all changes over the dials, all very red, sexy and high performance happening there. We go back into normal mode. It all changes over again. And lastly, we go into off-road mode. <coughs> what off-road mode does is basically alter the transmission settings to allow that some wheels may slip and have no traction at all. In that situation, it sends the traction from the motor through the transmission to the wheels that do have grip, rather than having a tyre spin. Say you're driving on a bit of a bush track, get into a picnic spot or something like that, or on the track going to the farmhouse, you could basically go through a rut and lift a wheel and that wheel would spin uselessly in normal mode but put it in off-road and it'll send the power to the wheel that has grip. Is it going to be a good enough system to take you off-road uh, on the beach, something like that? Possibly not, uh, not because the tra traction system won't work well, just it's still a, an SUV with 20 inch wheels on it and it doesn't have the ground clearance possibly to do soft sand getting on and off the beach. 
but that's all good. It also has down here, we have a look, it's also got hill descent control. When the camera focuses, there it is, that's the hill descent, hill descent control button. Very good. One other thing I forgot to mention, wireless charging mat down there. And a little 12 volt outlet as well. Makes it very handy if you've got a plug in a dash cam, that 12 volt. And you can charge your phone wirelessly there without it slipping around too much. As I said, very nice here in the Mazda CX60 GT. Taking a look in the rear seat now of the CX60 GT. As part of the package they have for the GT on this car, they've got the, the lovely leather continuing in there. I quite like the colour here. It's very attractive with the nice big armrest. It folds up out of the way if you don't need it. That lovely big panoramic sunroof there, quite a view out of there, that's very nice. And then we look down here, we've got the air vents and the seat heating controls there for the rear seats because the outboard rear seats are heated too. Some USB-C ports and here we have very good here AC power outlet. I like that. Very good. Very handy. Very nice here in the GT the CX60 GT in the rear seat. Lots of space, lots of room. Very nice. Well, what's in the back of the CX60? Let's have a look. Power tailgate, of course. Very nice. And in the back here, there's 477 litres of space with the rear seats up. When the rear seats fold down, it increases to 1,726 litres of space. So plenty of room to stow away all your gear in there if you're going away on a trip or having to carry lots of stuff around for work. Even better, when you look underneath here, there's a real tyre in here for the spare. It's only a space saver, hey, but in this day and age everything seems to have a glue kit or something like that and no spare at all. Full size spare is absolutely ideal, but next best thing is a space saver and that's what the CX60 has. Can you tow with the CX60? Well the answer is yes. It has a brake towing capacity of 2,500 kilos. A gross vehicle mass of 2,500 kilos, so that should be easy to remember. Can't tow anything any heavier than what you are. That's always a good thing. The curb weight on the car for the GT model as you see listed here by Mazda is 1,949 kilos. That leaves you a payload from the GVM subtracting the curb weight gives a payload of 551 kilos. Family of four in there, bit of luggage, fuel, you're going to go pretty close to that. But this is where the question comes back in about towing. This particular car can't tow. There's no tow, tow ball fitted at this point. But that's easily fixed by your Mazda dealer. Having the tow bar fitted, towing a big trailer a boat or a caravan behind it. But as I said, it's 2,500 kilos, but the ball weight that goes down onto the tow ball is actually included as part of your 551 kilo payload. That means up to 250 kilos, or 10% of the maximum trailer weight, could be being transmitted onto your tow ball and adding to your payload, which, if you're too heavily loaded, may well very easily put you over the gross vehicle mass and that's not a good place to be by any means. So assuming a 250 kilo ball weight on the tow bar at the back here, if it was fitted, that would mean the net payload left is about 301 kilos. 
mum, dad, two kids, luggage. You're really going to have to start to think whereabouts you put things, either in the boat or the caravan or the camper trailer, whatever is your towing behind you. Are you going to stay under the GVM and be legal? Well, what's it like driving the CX60 GT? I've got to say, very nice. It's comfortable, and when you put your foot down, you hear the smooth 3.3 litre inline six leap away. It is a very nice car to drive. 3.3 litre inline six? Where have I heard that before? Hang on, that was a motor in the XD Falcon from over 40 years ago, and a Kingswood even older than that. But I've got to tell you, this motor is vastly superior to those engines that I remember. 3.3 litre inline six, but this is also a 24 valve turbo motor with a mild hybrid boost of the 48 volt system. It's substantially, substantially more power than those engines. I think it actually has more power than what the V8s that you had. But it is smooth, tractable, responsive, easy to drive. It's very nice. It is quite comfortable engine to drive along and just fits in nicely with the whole car. And I've got to say if you want to compare it to those old motors, this thing drinks the fuel so much less than those things did. It is vastly, vastly superior. But enough of that. Inside here we've got all the creature comforts going. As I said, I've got the seat warmer on, the steering wheel heater on, it's got the lovely big glass panoramic sunroof, leather everything inside quality stereo system, Apple CarPlay going at the moment, my phone on there, wirelessly charging and also wirelessly connected to the system as well. Beautiful view out the front, spacious all around, you've got view out the side mirrors, everything like that that you need and it is basically quite a comfortable drive. Approaching a lap or crossing. Oh well, we are too, there it is, it's going across the crossing too, so better stop here and wait for that to happen. This also has the eye stop system, which when you're in traffic, will actually stop the motor. And then it's gone out, as soon as I let my foot off the brake, it comes back to life again. That helps a lot with the economy, but with the 48 volt system that's on this, the mild hybrid, I think one of the primary functions, apart from helping with fuel economy, is with the eye stop system, it seems to have corrected what previous Mazdas I've driven with eye stop has had. And when the motor restarts in those cars, it feels like the whole thing's going to shake apart or the motor's trying to leap out the bonnet. The new system here, with the 48 volt mild hybrid, it is much smoother and it just starts quickly and quietly and easily. That I think is a big leap forward with this car in the CX60 and makes the driving experience that much more comfortable. It's very good. Fuel economy. How does it help there? Well, Mazda lists the fuel economy on this car at 7.4 litres per 100 k's. I'm currently seeing on the dash here right now in the instruments, 8.6 litres per 100 k's. But the best I've actually seen in the week I've been driving the car has been 8.4 litres per 100 k's. So it is a little bit higher. I know testing and control conditions you always get better results than in the real world. But 8.4 not too bad and I've been doing a lot of urban driving, freeway driving, highway driving in country areas, been given the whole gamut of things to drive along on and the overall average, the best I've seen is about 8.4 litres per 100 k's. Safety, 5 star and cap safety rating. Apple CarPlay lets you know when a message comes in too, so that's nice. But NCAP 5 star safety rating, so it's going to be good for the fleet manager and good for you too to know that this is a very safe car, should the unthinkable happen, you've got all the advanced systems to try and help protect you and your family. Other driver aid features, well it's got blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, adaptive headlights, autonomous emergency braking, forward and rear cross traffic alerts, cameras at the front, camera at the rear, 360 degree camera which is very handy when it's parking, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, it's got all the bells and whistles going for it and it is 
just so intuitive about it. I like the lane keeper system. It's not intrusive the way some other manufacturers have it in with braking wheels. It just vibrates the wheel and tugs you ever so gently back to the center of the lane when it needs to. Um, the lane departure screams at you sometimes and it's a bit loud and interruptive, but certainly gets the attention. So I think overall, this is a very comfortable car and the weather, whether you're looking for a novated lease or you're trying to convince the fleet manager to get you one, don't know how you go with that, but they might be a bit cooperative, you never know. But especially if you're looking for a novated lease, mid-sized SUV that's comfortable, performs well, gives good fuel economy, and as a kind of car, I think it's actually a leap forward over the CX-5 in terms of styling. I like it a lot. It's just, it just has a stronger, more aggressive road stance, in my opinion. And that, I think, symbol is round a little more squared off. It just gives it that better look. And, I quite like it. It is a very nice car to drive, and it's one, should you get one, I think you'd be happy seeing it, and very happy driving it around every day. Well, what's the ownership experience like? with Mazda and the CX-60. Well, first up, the warranty is the industry standard, five years, unlimited kilometers. And to that, when you borrow this car, they'll give you five years roadside assistance as well. When it comes to servicing, it's every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. And on the Mazda website, you can type in to that website as a service price calculator. You just put your rego number in, it'll tell you the value and the cost to you of each of those services, be it 15,000 Ks, 30,000, 45,000, etc. And you can look it up all the way through for many years ahead to what the costings will be for your service. But well, what's it gonna cost you? As they say, tell them the price, son. Well, as you see it right now, Mazda has a drive away deal going at the moment, except, sorry guys, it doesn't apply in Western Australia, but everywhere else in Australia, 64,990 drive away. And that's with the upgraded leather interior here in the GT, the nice black 20 inch wheels, and everything you see here, it starts at 64,990. To that, we have the Vision Plus pack, that's $2,000. We're up to $66,990 drive away. And then it's got some nice mats in there from Mazda. They cost $270. So the total cost, as you see it here, right here, right now, is $67,260 drive away. And considering it's a medium sized SUV, they might start to say, well, it's a bit exy that. But it's a very comfortable car to drive. Beautiful interior very stylish, great street cred and road presence, and I just think, if you're looking at a novated lease for a car that you'd be proud to be seen in, I don't think you'd go too far wrong here with the CX-60. Well, what's the fleet manager gonna say about the CX-60? It's a nice car. As you see it here right now, it's about a bit over $67,000. For a five-seater on the fleet, maybe, maybe not. If you've got a very understanding fleet manager, definitely, but certainly it would be an option for you if you had the option of a novated lease as part of your salary package, then this would be right up there for you. I believe you're looking for a five-seater SUV. But if you're looking to lease any type of car, the first place you or the fleet manager should go is to our website, fleetnewsgroup.com.au. There you will find the fleet leasing guide. You can download it for free, and it'll tell you everything there is to know about car leasing and all the facets of that stuff you need to know. Car leasing guide, fleetnewsgroup.com.au. Well, what would be some of the competitor vehicles to the CX-60? Well, first up, there'd be its sister car, the CX-5, specifically the G35 GTSP. 
That car has a 2.5 litre four cylinder turbo motor rated at 170 kilowatts of power and 420 newton metres of torque. Fuel economy on that car, 8.2 litres per 100 k's on the combined cycle and 19 inch wheels, whereas this one has 20 inch wheels and its fuel economy is listed by Mazda at 7.4 litres per 100 k's out of a six cylinder mild hybrid turbo motor. A little bit better I think than the old 2.5 four cylinder. But here's where the CX-5 comes back at the CX-60 with gusto. The price. For the equivalent CX-5 versus the CX-60 here, the price for that car drive away here in New South Wales is 54871. That's 10 grand cheaper than this car. But what other makes are out there competing in this space directly? Well, what about the Lexus NX350? That one comes with a free upgrade from Lexus to its F-Sport Auto Pack. Has a 2.4 litre motor, putting out 205 kilowatts and 430 newton metres torque. Still short of what the CX60 is doing here with its inline turbo mild hybrid six, but the fuel economy on the Lexus 8.1 litres per 100 k's versus again 7.4 here with the CX60 and then on the Lexus though you have to add what's called the EP2 pack to get the glass sunroof and the heated steering wheel to make it up to the same spec as what you see on this car here and this is the real kicker hang on to your hats because the Lexus wow drive away here in New South Wales 95 817 that's $30,000 dearer than what the CX-60 is. And I think comparing it to those two cars makes the CX-60 a clear winner. Mazda CX-60 GT, mid-size SUV, looks very nice, goes really well, I quite like it, it's very smooth, nice, comfortable, easy drive this car, I like it. Is the fleet manager going to say, yes, let's get a dozen tomorrow? Probably not. But if you have the option of a salary sacrificing and are looking for a novated lease for a mid-sized SUV, you'd be hard pressed to go past this one. Under 65K drive away under the Mazda offer with all the lever and all the bells and whistles that are in it, I think it's a really good value proposition and one that should really make your shortlist, if not be at the top. It's a great car. I've enjoyed driving it. I like it. Remember, if you like these videos, don't forget to hit that like button down there, as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you can be kept up to date with everything we're doing here at the Fleet News Group. I'm Rod, thank you very much for watching and you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.